millions of public trust to manage vast scientific advances that optimize the public health through clear, timely reviews and decisions. We want to tell you about some recent innovative and successful efforts that directly touch the lives of everyone here. When you or someone you care about becomes ill, these programs ensure that the best new medicines will be available to your doctor, along with the information necessary to use them effectively. Together, these programs represent an unprecedented partnership between my agency, patients, industry, and Congress. Collaboratively, we have a drug approval system that ensures public resources and private sector funding are managed with public sector accountability for the common good. I would like Dr. Woodcock, who is one of the principals running this set of programs, to tell you what these changes mean for the way we promote the public health. Thank you. Federal drug regulation is intended to ensure that Americans have access to safe, effective, and truthfully labeled medicines, medicines they can count on to improve their health. However, over the years, people have repeatedly criticized the unintended consequences of this regulation and the long FDA review process. Beneficial drugs were not reaching patients as quickly as possible. In, in response, in 1992, FDA began three innovations designed to improve this previously intractable problem. First, a user fee program for drug applications. Second, accelerated approval of treatments for serious diseases. And finally, a priority system. What was innovative about these approaches? Their common theme is public-private collaboration towards shared goals, a new paradigm, really, for FDA. The user fee program joins private funding with public sector accountability. We held ourselves accountable. Accelerated approval recognizes what patient groups had been telling FDA for years. The people who lack alternatives are willing to accept more risk to get possibly life-saving treatments. In this case, FDA moved from a stance of strict public protection to one of collaborative risk management in partnership with patients and their doctors. What are the results of these innovations? FDA has exceeded all the goals that were set for the user fee program, and Americans with Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, AIDS, and cancer, to mention just a few, have received new treatments much sooner. There are no drug backlogs now at FDA. Last year, 53 completely new medicines were approved, twice as many as in previous years, in about half the usual time, saving over a year. For drugs receiving accelerated approval, at least an additional year was saved. The impact on health is exemplified by AIDS statistics. People with AIDS are living longer because of effective new treatments. Medicines that were reviewed in a matter of months under the user fee program, and they were given accelerated approval. It's hard to imagine the cost to patients and their families if FDA approval had taken those additional years. Industry has benefited from this program. The speed and predictability of the process make user fees a good investment. Improvements don't have to sit idle awaiting FDA approval. Industry savings can be reinvested in research on new medicines with ultimate public benefit. Can these successes be duplicated in other settings? Yes, we believe so. FDA is currently discussing user fee programs for other FDA regulated products. And this idea could extend to other regulatory agencies. The concept behind accelerated approval that the intended beneficiaries of government regulatory programs have a voice in their management is a powerful one. These programs showcase the impact achieved when longtime adversaries work together to achieve tangible results. In our case, improving the health of Americans. Thank you. Questioned a, a, a smaller uh, high-tech uh, bio, biology firm attempts to get a drug approved. Uh, what is the user fee that they pay versus, let's say, Merck or Pfizer or big drug companies? 
There is the same user fee, but we have a waiver program for um, companies that do not have any products, for example, or where there'd be a financial burden. So it doesn't create a, a barrier to bringing a good new product forward. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've always thought FDA was probably in a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation on this issue. And I, so I guess I'm going to dance around that a little bit. Um, more recently, we've uh, had uh, a lot of revelations about the, the Fin Fin group and so forth, where in a relatively short period of time, over a longer period of testing time, perhaps we might have been aware of the heart valve problems and so forth. Does something like that, first of all, was Fin Fin or any of the, the, that associated group part of this program? No. Um, the, well, I should take it back. One of, the, one of the medications was. But that's a medication that had been available in Europe for more than a decade. Uh -huh. Interestingly, even when these drugs were looked at over long periods of time, those very subtle side effects weren't seen. The point you're making, though, is a very important one, which is we have to balance competing tensions. There's a tension to have the, the a desire to have uh, decisions made in as timely a fashion possible, but an equal tension that we want to make sure that the decisions are the very best given limited scientific information at that time. What it means is we must be active and make the best decisions at that moment. But then what we must do is continually re-examine those decisions in the future. So in a sense, we never reach a final closure, but continually take new scientific information. The, the way we do this is partly with this partnership of involving industry to get the latest information, even about products that have been previously approved, patient groups, and so forth. I follow just for a moment. Does something like that, however, have the potential of undercutting this whole program? The um, clinical testing is a different part of the uh, drug development process. The user fee program relates to the FDA review time after all the clinical testing is completed. So the question that arises in this case and has continually arisen in drug regulation, as Mike said, is, is the clinical testing enough, which is a different issue than re FDA review? It's the quality and the quantity of the data at any point in time. Do you have any sense at all of the benefits in dollars to the drug companies for getting their drugs on the market sooner? Um, we asked them this in anticipation of this presentation, and, and we weren't able to get any um, specific figures, but we were told that this is the best investment they could possibly have made. I'm quoting. I, I think the, 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 the support for that has been the really unprecedented uh, uh, efforts that have been made by the pharmaceutical and biotech industries in having the reauthorization of this program. Uh, they've been so clear about the benefits that they see f corporately, but also they care about the public health and they see the benefits there as well. Uh, the numbers are perfectly enormous, but, but they haven't shared them with us. Um. Has there been any uh, discussion about the possibility since the uh, <coughs> pharmaceuticals are getting on the market sooner because of this change system? that there might be some incentive for those pharmaceutical companies to put their new drugs on the market less expensively? Has that been discussed as part of the uh, reciprocal agreement here? I, I think that your question is a really provocative one. It would take a long time to answer. But I think there are other forces at work here, including managed care and uh, pharmaceutical pricing, that have very powerful roles in this. What we want to do is we want to make sure that government doesn't put impediments in, in the development of important new products. We do that because that's what the public expects. I think we can reduce the cost of that. Our hope is that that cost gets translated downstream. But part of the things that pharmaceutical companies have used as an excuse for the high cost of many medications they put on the market is not only the research that it took to create it, but the very long administrative process of going through the FDA. Well, you've just changed that dramatically, and it seems the reciprocal reaction should be that maybe those pharmaceuticals will be less expensive, and it might be something worth discussing in the legislative reauthorization. <laughs> uh, I think that's best left. <laughs> your, your time is over.